This is a USB power bank I bought from TK Maxx and I've already opened it as you can see from the big skid marks here because sadly, um, well firstly it's only, well the only ones they had in the shop in this size were only available in this rather hideous shade of blue and it's painted onto white plastic. They're Basically they've taken the cases and just spray painted them with colour which uh, I think I prefer solidly coloured plastic. It's dead easy to scratch this, this one. Um, it comes with a little instruction manual, and the reason I've opened it uh, and before uh, actually doing this usual sort of tear it apart type video, the reason I opened it before was because the, the instruction manual is very clearly designed for lots of random power banks, and helpfully says things like, um, <clears throat> the red LED light the inside of the power adapter will light up red whenever it is charging. And note, unless specified otherwise on packaging, power bank does not have a specific indicator show when it's done charging. It actually has the full bar graph of charging indicators here, which aren't very visible. Uh, the LEDs inside look great. Well, they look very flickery because they're being multiplexed, but uh, they're very bright and sharp inside. But all they've done here is they've drilled little recesses into the white plastic case. Um, and uh, they've got little partitions here as light guide, well, light boxes, I suppose, really. And it means it's visible, but it's not super bright. It's not as bright as it could be. It's really sharp inside. It's got a red and blue LED under the, the power button here. And again, you can see the blue glowing randomly through it, but you can't see the red at all because the blue plastic, the blue, blue paint in the plastic blocks that light completely. The unit has an LED torch, just a single 5mm LED in the front. You press and hold the button and it goes on. Press and hold the button, it goes off. But um, getting back to the instructions, it, it seems to be generic instructions that it comes with all these warnings about uh, not charging for more than uh, three to five hours and definitely don't charge it for more than six hours and it may get warm and explode in flames and stuff like that. And I thought, really? Um, so just out of interest, it, it made me think, is this maybe got a charging problem that, you know, if you leave it on trickle charge all the time, just, well... It's lithium, so it goes up to the 4.2 volt, hopefully, and uh, then goes into standby mode uh, and won't push any more current into the cells at that point. <clears throat> and I tested it. I put a voltmeter on it and I met, monitored the current, and it shuts off on 4.2 volts. And uh, I had a wee note somewhere, which I've probably lost now. Yeah, I've lost the note, uh, which is a shame, really, because it had uh, data on the chips. Hold on a second. No, I've misplaced that bit of paper with the data, which is a shame, really. Uh, no, I haven't. Yes, it's it charged up to 4.2 volts, and then after I, I just left it on charging for ages and then measured the voltage again, and it actually dropped down to 4.178, so it has the full protection. You can leave it charging. It also says things like... Um, where is it? Where is it? Uh... It suggests that if you plug it into a high current uh, power source, uh, where is it? Capable of like 2.1 amps or 3 amps. Ah, yes. <clears throat> Make sure the wall adapter rating is 1 amp wall adapter. If the wall adapter is UL 2.1 amp rating or higher, it may not charge the device correctly and may overheat the device. That's bollocks, because as long as it's getting 5 volts, and I have tried on a high current charger and a, a low current charger, as long as it's getting 5 volts, it charges about the, the usual 780 milliamps uh, sort of region. So it's charging at less than an amp on whatever load you put it on. Um, but yeah, so this is just a generic guide, and it makes this look really, you know, if you read the guide, it's like, oh god, I don't want to touch it, it's going to explode. But it's not, it's perfectly safe. Well, apart from this, uh, the red, uh, the positive tag is very close. It's got a bit of captain tape over it, but it's very close, um, and it's got a plastic uh, positioner, but it's close to the shell of this connector, the uh, USB output. So let's take this all out, because it comes out quite easily. And if I click the button now, you'll see the LEDs really are, uh, they're very bright, they're very sharp looking, it's quite nice. Prefer it out the back box actually. 
Now, this thing oddly has, it's got an anonymous chip here, which is the controller. It's a little microcontroller, probably. And then it's got these two 8-pin chips. And the two 8-pin chips uh, are an APM4953 and a 9926. Now, let's see. I, I'm sure I logged some data down in those. Yes, I did. The APM4953 chip is a dual P-channel MOSFET and the 9926A is a dual N-channel MOSFET and I see that one of them is uh, basically doing the switching side because it's connected directly uh, to the, um, the inductor here but I'm not sure what the other one's for. I thought maybe it's for isolating the battery but then if you look down at this end it's got two 6-pin chips it's got a... Uh, um, DW01, which is the lithium charge and discharge control, and it's got its the usual little partner chip, the 8205S, which is a dual N channel MOSFET used to disconnect the battery. So um, I'm not sure what this other one's for. Yeah, odd. But um, other than that, uh, other than the fact the case is a hideous colour and it's barely the LEDs are barely visible through it, uh, other than that, it actually seems quite a decent chunky little pack. I've not checked it for capacity yet, but um, all the other ones I've had from the same sort of stable, so to speak, have had the, f the full capacity. It's not the wee Chinese ones that give you the one amp hour cells. But yeah, uh, it's decent enough. It looks all right. I'll be giving it some use. Oh, there is one thing that is a slight niggle. If you plug in a low load, it does that thing where it detects the load and it turns on, and then the wee LEDs start uh, lighting and stuff like that. Well, obviously it's fully charged now, so they're not going to do the show the bar graph level. But uh, this one uh, is obviously looking for a modest load to keep it running because this little um, light here just doesn't provide enough load. And after a while, it just turns it off, and it'll turn it. It glows very dimly. You can just barely see it glowing because it's obviously testing to see. Uh, if, you know, there's a load there, but when you take it out and put it back in again, it kicks it off again. But, uh, so it's only suitable for modestly high-ish loads. But yeah, it's, it's a nice enough design. It's quite a compact design, but it still has plenty of sort of room around the circuit board, and it all fits very well, and it's got nice robust plastic fins. But uh, yeah, it's, it's okay. It's not too bad, apart from the the little niggles I have mentioned, and the really scaremongering instructions that basically say it's going to explode in your hands. It's just weird. <laughs>